Harry's Wife, Part 104.10. Oh, dear. Compared to Tegan Tegan. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. As you know, I have a separate series about Chrissy Teagan Tegan, and for those of you wondering why I call her that, it's simply because she doesn't know how to pronounce her own surname correctly. She can't decide whether it's Teagan or Tegan, and therefore, in a nod to that, I always refer to her as Chrissy Teagan Tegan. Uh, Chrissy Teagan Tegan is a narcissist, a rather obvious one, and I have unravelled and unpacked her various unpleasant behaviours and rampant attention-seeking, utilising such things as a miscarriage and sharing it with the world as part of her absence of boundary recognition, sense of entitlement, lack of accountability, and without due regard for others affected by her behaviour. We then, of course, had the similar indecision whereby she doesn't know how to pronounce her surname, and she wasn't sure whether it was a miscarriage or an abortion. It was more information which came out at a later date. So, it's fair to say that when it comes to Chrissy Teigen Tegan, she's a base, rudimentary narcissist. Self-seeking, self-serving, self-obsessing, and rather obvious in her behaviours. And therefore, to be compared to her is not a particularly flattering thing. But something called Oh My Mag, whatever that might be, with an article by Yukti Malhotra, tells us Harry's wife compared to Chrissy Teigen Tegan. Here's why. Oh dear. Is this further evidence of the downward spiral that Harry's wife is being compared with Chrissy Teigen Tegan? Only one way to find out. Harry's wife's recent comment on her deal or no deal gig has made her face a lot of backlash, and now she's compared to Chrissy Teigen Tegan. During her Archetypes podcast, Breaking Down the Bimbo, Harry's wife commented on how she felt objectified during her gig on Deal or No Deal. Ever since then, many of her co workers from the show have criticised her for her choice of words, in effect, pointing out that she has told Porky Pies as ever about the experience, see parts pass him. Another model from the show, Tamika Jacobs, has not responded to Harry's wife about the show, and not surprisingly, they're not pleasant. I think his mentor right has now responded to Harry's wife's remark about the show. Reportedly, Harry's wife was just an alternate or standing on the show, alongside Chrissy Teigen Tegan, meaning she would only appear on the screen if and when any other models were not present. According to Jacobs, the <clears throat> 41-year-old never socialised with any other models on the show, Jacobs told Newsweek. She didn't click with us. She kept herself to herself. She always did. That would show a degree of aloofness, and probably because Harry's wife thought she was better than everybody else that was there, demonstrating part of her haughty behaviours. The article continues, Comparing her with Chrissy, Jacobs added, Chrissy was awesome. She was fun. She's always been fun. Lots of laughing. Lots of just mischievous behaviour. I don't think Chrissy would ever say bad things about deal or no deal. No, she would just say bad things online by encouraging people to kill themselves. Like I said, it was a great job. We had fun. It paid us well. I couldn't imagine Chrissy saying, I wish I was never on that show. If she weren't on the show, she wouldn't have met John Legend. She would show up a little bit to party with us, like she would at least come out with us, and then everybody would trickle home. Chrissy was cool. She's hilarious. She likes to eat. She likes to cook. She stands up for herself. She's confident. She's all these things. Jacobs also revealed that most of Harry's wife would just be on the bench as an alternate, she claimed. Harry's wife would be back there with scripts getting ready for an audition, so it was paid time for her to study her scripts like it was a perfect setup. She was always very driven and wanted to book something better and bigger. She eventually went on to the biggest thing of her acting career as Rachel Zane in the legal drama Suits. So, a fairly throwaway article. But what it does demonstrate, of course, that Harry's wife wasn't even first choice when it came to being a briefcase girl on Deal or No Deal, which, of course, would wound her. 
And narcissism, of course, would deal with it at the time by basically saying, well, I don't care because I'm bigger and better and more important than all of this. And in the circumstances, I am going to go on to bigger and better things. So I'm quite content, actually, for them to pay me while I sit here and study my scripts. This isn't me. Of course, she did appear in some of the episodes and was certainly drinking up the fuel, as I've explained in parts passim. But the fact that she was an alternate would have wounded her, but her narcissist will have dealt with it in a haughty manner by basically saying, well, I don't care. I can get paid and study my scripts. I'm moving on from this. I'm going to do bigger and better things. Furthermore, we see the comparison with Chrissy Teigen Tegan, who, as I've explained, is not a pleasant individual at all. But nevertheless, imagine now that you're being compared to someone as base and rudimentary as Chrissy Teigen Tegan, and basically being told, you're not as fun as she is. You don't hang out with us. You're not fun. You're not great to be around. Those comments, of course, would amount to challenge fuel for Harry's wife by pointing out that she was aloof, that she kept her distance from the other models, and that Chrissy Teigen Tegan was a lot more fun. Irrespective of the fact that Harry's wife's narcissism would be thinking, well, I'm going to move on to bigger or better things, she would have this contradiction, effectively, which would be, I'm back here studying my scripts. I don't need to be with people like you because I'm going on to bigger and better things. But at the same time, you have to pay me attention. And to say that I wasn't fun, that's not fair. That's not nice. You're picking on me. So you will see the inherent contradiction that because she was an alternate, she wasn't always first and foremost. Therefore, she would sit reading the scripts, getting paid for it, and Anasa would tell her, well, that's the better outcome for you. But by the same token, she would also want to be seen as popular and well-liked. That would mean, of course, having to mix with people, be seen with them, go out with them, and do things with them. That wasn't happening. But then to be told, well, actually, you're not as fun as the other people, because, of course, she stayed in that position of withdrawal from them, her narcissism wouldn't like that either. But you can't be two things at once, save that her narcissism believes that she can. So you would recognise... Well, if you're going to be the alternate and you're going to be focusing on your scripts and staying in the background, you're not going to hang out with people. Therefore, it follows that you're not going to be seen as sociable or fun. That makes sense. Or, if you are going to be sociable and fun, you won't have had the time to do the background work. Pick which one you want to be. Well, in the world of the narcissist, you know, the cake must be had and the cake must also be eaten. So Harry's wife's narcissism would direct that not only was she going on to bigger and better things and she would stay in a position of withdrawal, but at the same token did not like the fact that she wasn't seen to be sociable. It would not be able to reconcile in its own mind that it's one or the other. It has to be both. Because Harry's wife believes that she's popular. She believes that she's likeable. She believes that there's much about her to enjoy. And this demonstrates the way that the narcissism compels those contradictions to occur. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.